Because, like, fabric buying is, like, its own hobby aside from fabric sewing. Hey, guys. Welcome back to my channel. Um, so, one of my friends on Twitter had asked me to do a video describing, like, different fabric types and uses. So, I'm going to go over some details with you guys. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna show you guys is called quilting cotton. It's 100% cotton, um, like this for instance, I think I got it at Joann's. Um, so most of what you'll see in Joann fabrics is quilting cotton. Normally people don't use it to make clothes. It doesn't have like any stretch or give, um, and it's usually used for making quilts, which is why it's called quilting cotton. So it's good for making um, napkins and uh, coasters or quilts or wall hangings. It's usually good for a lot of things that like you wouldn't uh, wear. So let me show you some things that I've made out of it. Okay, so here's a pin cushion. Um, I don't have any needles stuck into it right now, but isn't this so cute? Um, so pin cushions are great. I just put some, it's called polyfill. It's a polyester filling um, like you would find in stuffed animals. Uh, here's like a little purse uh, with little pockets in the front here. So um, quilting cotton, um, you should wash it and dry it before you use it generally if it's a thing that's ever gonna need to be washed and dried because it does shrink. And so if you sew it all up and then you go and you use it and it gets dirty and you have to wash and dry it, then the seams are gonna be a different length than the final length of your fabric and it's gonna get all warped and look weird. So whenever you buy fabric, uh, bring it home and wash it and dry it. So lots of crafts can be done with quilting cotton um, it's super fun to work with. It's one of the first things that I worked with. Um, and it comes in like the most large amount of like colors and patterns and such. Um, you can find it easily almost anywhere. You can even find it like at the dollar store sometimes. Um, so, and there's lots of fun projects that you can do with quilting cotton. I have seen people make clothing out of it. And they did great. So uh, it's not to say that you can't break the rules sometimes, but um, it's not designed generally to make clothes out of. It's a little stiff. It's not the softest against your skin. Okay, so here's the next one. It's flannel. So I don't know if you can tell. It's quite soft. Um, you can make PJs out of this, I believe. Although they say on the side, like, not designed for children's pajamas because they haven't been treated with um, a chemical that's a flame retardant. Um, so legally they have to um, put that disclaimer on there. Um, so I'm not gonna tell you what you should or shouldn't do, but flannel is very soft. So uh, flannel should always be washed and dried before you use it, especially like the stuff at like Joann's or those other um, you know, local fabric stores, they tend to shrink a lot. So you could even wash and dry them on like high heat, probably two times in order to like get all the shrinkage out. It also means you should buy extra. Like if you know you need two yards, you might want to buy like two and a half yards, uh, in order to make sure that you have enough for whatever project you are doing. I've never made pajamas out of flannel, but I have made like little scarves, uh, I've made coasters, I've made, um, you can do like those pot holders um, and things like that. So um, flannel has a lot of cool uses and often at Joann's they have, I think a couple times a year they do like 60% off all their flannel um, or like $2.49 a yard for flannel. It's like you can get it so cheap sometimes. Um, so flannel is fun for a lot of stuff and I mean you can look on Pinterest there's like just absolutely tons of projects that you can do with flannel okay so there's knit fabrics which are fabrics which have like a stretch and then there are 
Okay, so there are woven fabrics, which is what I've just shown you. The cotton and the um, flannel are both considered to be woven fabrics. So um, they, they're not fabrics that typically have um, stretch. Whereas knit fabrics are ones um, that have stretch to them. Okay, so this is called tulle. It looks like netting. Um, I made my, um, I, I made the skirt for my wedding dress, which um, if I can find a good picture of it, I will pop one in here now. Um, so the skirt of my wedding dress was made out of tulle. Um, this is blue, obviously. Um, it comes in all sorts of different colors. You can do like little details for like hats, like those old timey, you know, whatever's. Um, I believe this is considered a woven fabric, but don't quote me on that. Um, so this, um, you can use it to make tutus, like if you're gonna do one of those like fun runs and you want like a big white tutu, so that when you get like sprayed with those color, you know, powders at the end, you've got like a tie-dye tutu. Um, it's called tulle and um, sometimes it comes in these little rolls of these strips and sometimes it comes um, like in large pieces, um, just like any other fabric that you would find. Okay, so I think those are the woven fabrics that I have. So now I'm gonna show you guys some knit fabrics. So the first one is double brushed polyester, which I made this shirt out of. Um, so double brushed polyester is a synthetic fabric. So it's not, it's a man-made um, fabric. It's not made from like natural fibers like cotton or bamboo. It's not super breathable. Um, it's, I believe it's what um, LuLaRoe makes their leggings out of. So if you like LuLaRoe's leggings, um, then you will like double brushed polyester. It's also called DBP. So if you're in any sewing groups and you see that DBP, that means double brushed polyester. Um, so you can make leggings out of it, you can make shirts out of it, you can make dresses out of it. Um, so I've made, a number of crop tops out of it, which are some of my favorite tops this summer. I've made tank dresses out of it. It got super popular, um, especially around the time when LuLaRoe was really popular. So it comes in all sorts of like really cool patterns. Um, so all of this, most of my fabric for making clothes is double brush polyester. Um, my understanding, which I might be wrong about, is that because it's not super breathable, um, it's not the greatest for making children's clothing out of. Just keep that in mind. Some more double brush polyester. So it's really soft. Um, it comes in a lot of like different gorgeous patterns and shapes and all of that. Um, it doesn't have much, it doesn't have like compression at all. So I wouldn't like make leggings out of it and then go work out in those leggings. Um, but if you just want like something comfy to like sit around in or whatever, it is a great fabric. Okay, so this next one is called um, ITY. It stands for interlock twist yarn. And I don't know what that means as far as like the uh you know creation of this fabric but i'll tell you about this fabric it has excellent drape which means like um like i have a shirt exactly like this out of this exact fabric um you can make dresses out of it i wouldn't make like shorts or leggings or pants because um it doesn't like if it stretches out it's either going to become see-through or it's gonna get baggy over time. Um, so I wouldn't make anything that was skin tight out of ITY. It feels like slinky a bit. So some ITY has better stretch than others. So if you're using a particular pattern, you just wanna make sure that your ITY has, you know, whatever stretch that's required. I have used this to make um, a floor length dress. Uh, I have used it to make crop tops. Um, I really like it and I think that this particular pattern is gorgeous. So this is um, called cotton lycra or um, uh, 
uh, cotton spandex. And so you'll see it, um, the abbreviation for it is CL or um, CS. So most people call it cotton lycra. So this is breathable. Um, it stretches. It's great for clothing. I, when my son was really little, um, I made him a bunch of leggings out of cotton lycra uh, because it is breathable. And I don't know why, but like little boys don't, they don't sell leggings for like newborn boys as much. I mean, I'm sure that they're out there, right? But all the leggings that I could find at the time seemed like they were like pink and purple and this and that. And like, I just wanted some like really cute boy leggings. You can make shirts out of it. You can make dresses out of it. Um, it's a little heavier duty than um, like ITY, for instance. So for me, I probably wouldn't make a full length dress out of cotton lycra just because um, it's, it would be a little heavy. Um, it also is a little stiffer. Um, it's not a stiff fabric, right? It still has plenty of movement and whatever, but um, it's just a little stiffer than the other ones that I've shown you so far, so far the ITY and the double brush poly. Um, another thing about cotton lycra is just that uh, you can find it at like Joann's. They usually have like a black cotton lycra and a white cotton lycra. And then in their character section, they usually have a couple options. Got this, which is like a Star Wars fabric. Oh, I have some TARDIS fabric. Um, and like I made a dress for myself out of the TARDIS fabric and I wear it all the time. So, uh, you know, adults can rock the character stuff too. Oh, and you can make out of that cotton lycra because it's breathable. You can make undies. Um, it's like a perfect fabric to make undies out of. I wouldn't make anything that's going to like get wet. I wouldn't make a swimsuit out of it. Um, so there you go. This is bamboo lycra. It has a lot of the same, a lot of the same things as the cotton lycra. It's a natural fiber. It has stretch. Um, this one is light weight. And so, um, you know, you could make a great shirt out of it. You can make a great dress out of it. Um, breathable fabrics are what you want for things like undies, kid clothes, stuff like that. Um, so bamboo, lycra, cotton lycra, those ones, obviously the natural fibers are way more breathable than anything that's like polyester or man-made. Okay, so this next one is rayon spandex. It has great drape, which just means, um, you know, the way that it falls uh, when you wear it on your body. Um, and so it's great for um, shirts, dresses. I wouldn't make pants out of it, I don't think, because this one specifically is just too thin for pants. Um, I think it would like bunch around like between your thighs and whatever, just because it, it is so light of a fabric. So um, I think people make undies out of rayon spandex. Again, it's breathable and all of that, but it's a much, it feels to me like a much more delicate fabric than like cotton spandex, for instance. So I personally probably wouldn't make undies out of it because I'd be afraid that they would get like saggy by the end of the day. Um, so it just depends on your comfort level. You could, however, probably make undies out of rayon spandex and use cotton spandex for like your waistband and the leg bands. And then it would probably hold up just fine because you'd have that heavier, um, more resilient fabric you know, sort of holding it to the shape of you. Um, here is mesh. Isn't this gorgeous? So um, a lot of people use mesh to make lingerie. Um, I got this thinking I would make like a fancy robe out of it or something. And then I just didn't get around to it. This is called scuba. So you can see it looks sort of like the fabric that a scuba suit would be made out of, but it is not. So um, when I first started sewing, I was like, scuba? Like, what are you talking about? It's just a term that people use. It's literally not used for making scuba suits, okay? But it sort of looks like the fabric that you would use to make a scuba suit. So I guess that's why they called it scuba. Um, so anyway, 
This is great for like pencil skirts or things. You could make like a peplum top out of it, right? Like a crop top with a little like a peplum top or maybe like a, a little blazer. That's like, that's like way more skilled than I am. But anyway, so scuba has a lot of structure um, and it is great to make a little more structured outfit out of. Okay, so this one is called French Terry. And this one, um, there's, uh, there's cotton French Terry, which I believe is like stiff, sort of like towel material. And then um, there's this, which I believe is like a rayon cotton spandex French Terry. I don't know. I'll look up the details and I'll post it below. This is one of my favorite fabrics. It's is way more breathable than the double brush polyester. Um, I make wonderful lounge pants out of this French Terry. It's so nice, but I use double brush polyester for the waistband because this, it'll get stretched out um, and it doesn't have that recovery. It doesn't um, pull back and hug your body in the way that double brush polyester does. That's why double brush polyester is great for leggings. French Terry is not great for leggings. Uh, French Terry can also be used to make like sweatshirts, zip up hoodies, that sort of a thing. Um, you can make tops out of it, tank dresses. Um, so it's good for a lot of things. It does sort of feel like a sweatshirt. It feels like a lightweight sweatshirt material to me. Okay, so I think this is a crepe scuba so this one's just like it's got a texture to it um the other scuba was like super smooth um and this one's got a texture um sort of like crepe paper um so it's got all the same aspects um that scuba does but it's got that you know crepey surface to it okay this is athletic brushed polyester so this is, um, it's similar to the double brush polyester. Um, it has a similar fabric content, but something about the way that they construct it, it's made to be worn um, for athletic applications. So like workout leggings or sports bras, I've used this fabric for both of those um, applications and it's great. I love it. Um, it does get a little hot uh, because it is polyester. A lot of workout clothes these days either are polyester or have high polyester contents in them anyway um, so if you know that you're gonna like sweat a lot or you really hate polyester then you wouldn't want um, you know a athletic polyester fabric so this is swim fabric so you can use it to make swimsuits um, it, it generally should be lined um, so that it's not see-through when it becomes wet. But if you have a dark enough fabric, you might be able to get away with it like not being lined. Um, but anyway, so it's usually, I believe it's usually nylon spandex. It's got a really great recovery. Like you can stretch it and it bounces back, which is part of the reason why you can wear it in the water and it doesn't just fall off. Um, so you can even make leggings out of it. I've made leggings out of it. I have a dress that I made out of swim fabric. Um, that I really love. Uh, you can make tank tops out of it. Um, so it's a really fun fabric to use. Um, I like to wear it in the summertime. Like I like to make leggings or dresses or whatever out of swim fabric and wear them in the summertime because it keeps me cool. I just realized there's one more. Um, so the ones that I've shown you so far that are like for garment making, um, those ones are all knit fabrics. This is fleece. Again, this is a woven fabric. Um, so a lot of people make blankets out of these. There's a bunch of cool crafts that you can do. You don't even have to have a sewing machine. You can just like cut it. Um, you can cut little strips and do two pieces layered on top of each other with matching strips and then you just tie it. That's how people make those like tie off blankets. Um, you can even like do that and then fill it, um, like do it on a small scale and then fill it with um, a filling and make like a little pillow. Okay, so those are all the fabrics that I'm like familiar enough with that I feel like comfortable telling you anything about them. Um, there are there are so many different types of fabric. 
and different applications of fabric that it would be hard to tell you about all of them and feel like I had done a good job about it. If you're a beginning sewist um, or seamster, you have uh, you know basic questions about fabric um, or if you want to correct me on something that I said incorrectly or whatever, drop me a comment below. I would love to know if you guys have um, you know more info on any of this stuff. If you want to see a particular sewing video, let me know. Thanks for watching. I'd love to talk to you guys um, even off of YouTube. So I'm going to drop my social media links below. Come find me. Follow me. Uh, we can chat.